there is a tug of war in your brain. That's one running with! Eat better. Train less. Look better. Go to free step one. AI will. Did you be worried? This big. Get off your goddamn phone. Doom scroll. The habit of endlessly consuming content, whether it's negative, overwhelming, or just plain entertaining, it keeps you chasing the next big reaction. And it's not just wasting your time, it's rewiring your brain, hijacking your mental health, and even altering how you process the world. So what's keeping us so locked in? And why is it so hard to stop? Golden State Warriors co-owner Chamath Palahapatiya shares his thoughts. We know for a fact that what all of these systems do, every single one, is it exploits our own natural tendencies in human beings to get and want feedback. And that feedback, chemically speaking, is the release of dopamine in your brain. And so what these feedback loops do, and they exist everywhere, in Call of Duty, in other video games, in social networking sites, they get you to react. And I think that if you get too desensitized and you need it over and over and over again, then you become actually detached from the world in which you live and you live in front of your screen. Think about how often you check your phone. That reflexive urge to scroll, refresh, and check notifications isn't just a habit. It's a deeply ingrained pattern. What keeps us coming back isn't just the content. It's the unpredictability. Sometimes you find something interesting, sometimes you don't. But that maybe factor is exactly what makes it addictive. Neuroscientist Rachel Barr explains how this unpredictable cycle keeps us hooked. Why is it that no matter what we're doing, we feel drawn to constantly check our phone and refresh social media apps? The short answer is that rewards are more exciting for the brain when they're unpredictable. As an example, we can train rats to push a lever every time they want a delivery of delicious food pellets. Thing is, they'll get more excited and eat more if that lever is unpredictable, meaning sometimes they push and nada. It's all to do with the way that the brain uses dopamine to tag rewarding experiences. This feature of the human brain is used against us in casinos, in the case of social media. Say you're at the slot machine, as your losses stack up, your brain starts to think this isn't rewarding at all and reduces dopamine firing. If those losses kept stacking up, that would actually nudge you to stop playing, but casinos know exactly when to put those wins so that you weren't expecting a big reward, you get a big reward, dopamine signaling goes nuts. When rewards are random and critically checking for them is very easy, we develop habitual behaviors that keep us coming back for more. So every time you check your phone, you're actually checking to see if the lever is delivering pellets today. If you've ever felt like you can't concentrate anymore, like your brain is tuned into TikToks instead of textbooks, you're not alone. Have you made it this far without checking your phone? Doom scrolling doesn't just eat up your time. It rewires your brain to expect constant stimulation, and it trains your brain to process information in shallow, bite-sized chunks, making deep focus feel almost impossible. Even the most educational or thought-provoking content still reinforces this pattern. Your brain gets used to quick hits of information instead of sustained, focused effort. Dr. Adam Alter, a professor at NYU, explains the long-term effects on your focus, mood, and mental health. One of the things it's doing is it's changing your tolerance for spending a long time doing something that involves hard, deep work and thinking. If you're getting 2,000 messages a day, each one lasting maybe a second or two seconds, that's how your brain starts to process information in these bite-sized chunks. And they're all also chosen to be maximally enjoyable, interesting, they bombard you with interesting content. And so what happens is you assume the rest of the world is gonna be like that. So if I say to a, a seven-year-old kid who's on a screen all day, it's time to learn to read. The amount of energy and intense concentration you're asking for there is so different from what that kid is used to. You can't expect people to just suddenly turn on this muscle that they haven't been using. So it makes us less used to having to try really hard. If you look at how many hours a day we're doing this for, we're leaving this other stuff behind. I could be doing lots of different things, but I don't do any of that stuff because I'm spending time mindlessly scrolling. So what's the solution? How do we fight back against platforms that profit from keeping us distracted and overwhelmed? It starts with understanding the mechanics of this hijacking. Awareness is the first step toward breaking the cycle. From there, and according to experts, you can take small, actionable steps. Set limits on your screen time, turn off notifications, and prioritize activities that build focus, like reading or mindfulness. 
Ultimately, moderation is key. Even with good content, the goal is to control your time, not let algorithms control you. The fight against doom scrolling is about reclaiming your time and attention, because your attention isn't just being stolen, it's being sold. How do you fight back against the algorithms? Let us know in the comments so we can stop scrolling and start living.